And some of this is funny to think about, but really think where it comes from. Really think the message you're sending your little girls. Mm -hmm. Think about the message you're sending your little boys. Um, and here's the thing. I'm not here to argue that men and women are the same because I don't believe they are. I don't believe that men and women are the same, but I believe they are equal. Welcome to the Sales Wolf Podcast. I am your host, Joseph Caldwell, and this is Tyler Harris. Is Tyler Harris. Uh, and we are the Sales Wolf. We've got a different topic for you today. Um, one that is very near and dear to our hearts, actually. Mm -hmm. Hadn't always been. And we're going to be vulnerable, and we're going to share some of that. But um, for real, this topic is near and dear to both of our hearts. When we both had daughters, so first of all, we're, we're, we're both alpha males raised in a, um, I mean, like it or lump it, it's a fairly male-dominated society, um, work world-wise, everything there, across the world, really. And when we both had daughters, um, I almost immediately became a feminist. Mm -hmm. um, it became, I became acutely aware of one of the biggest issues in the world and definitely in our society is um, uh, it's a gender issue, right? Yep. It's a gender issue. And it's not comfortable to talk about, really. Uh, and it's not, it's not super popular either. And we'll probably get some haters on this, and that's okay. Um, this is our point of view. Uh, and two alpha males running a Sales Wolf podcast on sales. Um, but I can promise you this. If you, if you listen, if you open your mind uh, and look at things from a different perspective, then, um, then this might help you in your everyday interactions with people. Right. Absolutely. So Tyler, take off, man. Tell me what you think. For me, you know, I've got a two year old and, and Joseph has uh, a plethora of girls, 15, 14 <laughs> and 13 years old. So which I have is, three, which three quite girls. frankly is, is terrifying to me. Um, Fucking terrifying to me too. Yeah. But you know, now the, the way that I view the world is through the lens of my daughter the way I make decisions now is through the lens of, of my daughter because my wife is strong, independent, like she'll be okay. Yeah. I mess up. She'll be okay. If I really mess up, she'll leave me and then she'll be okay. Like she'll find someone else and she'll have a you know happy life and you know, and she's strong. Yeah. She's but now the way I view the world and the way I view my decisions that I make in this world are based on what is my daughter going to think about that? What is my daughter going to think when she finds out her dad did X, right? And that, to me, placed a whole different filter on the, on the way I, I view the world. But it also made me vastly aware of the gap in, in gender roles. Inequality. Inequality. Um, because of the fact that I look at my daughter and, and want her to have every opportunity to succeed, every opportunity to um, not just live life to the fullest for herself, but for her to be able to empower the world yeah. um, to the fullest. And, and for there not to be any roadblocks along the way that are, that are based on anything other than her shortcomings. Right. And for her to have an equal playing field with her one day brother or with her, you know, male counterparts that she has the exact same opportunity that I did. Right. And I just don't think that that's the case yet in the world. Right. It's not the case. And in, in a lot of societies, it's very apparent. Sure. And people that are aware in our society, it's still very apparent. Um, 
and, and it's pervasive in everything we do. I, I tell you, one of the first times uh, that I realized this deep-seated thought process that is pervasive was when um, my son uh, did something or fell and got hurt, and my daughter was there, and my son was crying. And, uh, and you know, I'm picking him up and brushing him off and, and, and telling him it's all right, man, and, and – it wasn't, he wasn't hurt bad. I think it hurt his ego more. And I said, man, quit crying like a little girl, Hmm. man. And as I said that I caught the look of my daughter and I went, why in the hell would I say that? Hmm. You're not crying at all. Like what, where does that come from? What in the world? And I became vastly aware of my words. Mm. I became aware that when we see someone we deem as weak, we call them the female genitalia, right? Sure. I mean, this is this is this is real life. Like this happens all the time. Yeah. I've even heard females use that terminology to talk about someone that's weak or less than. Mm-hmm. And now it is so, it is so degrading and offensive to me. Because, I mean, break it down. Or, 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 you and I like we we we're, we're in sports or whatever, and some guy um, football drills some dude, knocks him, you know, mm-hmm. snot bubbles, everything else, about <laughs> knocks his bonnet off his head. I mean, dude, let me tell you, yeah. we go, we go, man, that's tough as balls. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's tough as balls. He's r- razor wire balls. Like, how stupid is that? Yeah. Like, if you think about it. My balls aren't that tough. No, 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 no. I mean, literally, just just take some time someday and flick one from behind. I mean, that's do- no. you will drop down. The older you get, it, the easier that is. To the, from behind. From behind. You will drop down in the most enormous uh, gut wrenching pain of your life. But if you think about a female and what uh, her stuff has to handle, giving birth to a child, give it like. Like, there's nothing tougher on this earth. Yeah, true. At one time, I was talking to my wife and I, about this subject, and I was like, my God, if we could figure out how to make tires out of that, <laughs> dude, we would be rich. <laughs> I mean, Tyler, think about Vagina it. Vagina tires. You, you can't wear them out. <laughs> you, they're the toughest things on this planet. You can't wear them out. And so, I mean, and we were laughing about that, but how it, it's so pervasive in our society, and some of this is funny to think about, but really think where it comes from. Really think the message you're sending your little girls. Mm-hmm. Think about the message you're sending your little boys. Um, and here's the thing. I'm not here to argue that men and women are the same, because I don't believe they are. I don't believe that men and women are the same. But I believe they are equal, mm-hmm. Okay. Same does not necessarily equate with equal, okay? And and so I'm not here to argue the the sameness of men and women sure. because because I, I'm raising a, a, a man and three women and they're very different. Yeah. Very different. Uh, and then the three girls are very different from each other. And so I'm I'm not I'm not here to argue that. What I'm here to argue is that it's literally been a several thousand year run yeah. for men and men need to wake up. Men need to wake up and, and, and treat on an intelligence level, um, treat them. We need to judge people on the content of their character, period. Mm-hmm. I don't care if they have breast and a vagina. I don't care if they have breast and a penis. I don't care if they have uh, a vagina and... I don't care what kind of sex they are. Sure. I don't. I, do, I absolutely do not care. I don't care if it's male, female, or anything in between that they choose to be or that they were born as. I do not care. What I care about is judging people on the content of their character. And this needs to be the pervasive message of our society. This, this needs not... We don't need to latch on to this and justify it. Anytime we're justifying something, remember we talked about this, it's just a lie. We don't need to justify this with some kind of ancient religion that makes zero sense in our society. Try that one on. Send me some hate mail. I'll engage. <laughs> I love, love that topic. Um, so, but seriously, 
Like, we need to all wake up. We need to wake up. I have sat in a restaurant with my daughter when we were on a date, and we're because we'll go on dates every month so we can spend one on one time together and eat a meal and talk. And I have seen business people sitting around a table, and I have showed my daughter um, how the female in the group was treated. I showed her, I pointed out their body language when she opened her mouth, the tilt away from her to cut like like it's it's <laughs> it's unbelievable and 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 the way the the patronizing looks i showed them to my daughter i was like look watch this watch this she's getting ready and she's sharing an idea and we were close enough to where we could hear them talking mm-hmm. and i was like watch her share this idea watch how either they won't address it or they will say something patronizing and in disagreement um, and it's fascinating. Yeah. Now, I don't understand all the nuances of that situation, but it was very healthy for me to talk to my daughter that way and to show her and to be like, hey, you can't lean on this crutch. You were born a female, and that's one of the most powerful places, beings you could have been born as, and you are going to learn to use it to your advantage. And these people that discount you because you're a female, you'll eat their lunch period in business and that's the way i'm raising them and uh and what's funny is you have a male that's a killer that's a killer that makes ceo that's a killer that goes out there and they praise him when a female makes it what do they call her man she's a bitch (laughs) think about it yeah look around sure look around this is this is this is the problem and until men wake up and and honestly until women wake up, even the feminist ones, until they wake up and they meet this with love instead of hatred, when they interact with me, with the me before I had kids, with love instead of hatred, when we do this in the, in the right manner, we'll change it. We'll change it. When we change ourselves, and then we'll change our situations like this. Anything else, Tyler? You're yeah, the man. So, I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> another phrase right (laughs) do do we ever say you're the woman (laughs) to a woman maybe um so the thing that that i think is interesting about this scenario is the fact that so women are are equipped to give birth Mm -hmm. to reproduce and and they're the ones that that have to carry that load like they, they, they have that there's nobody else that can do it but because of that, and when you say not the same but equal, it seems in, let's just use the business world, that the reason why you see more men advance is because of that process that can only be carried out by the woman takes them out of the game for a period of time. Sure. And so how do we, and this is a question, how do we take that out of the equation. The fact that the, the male and female that are, that are equal, equal skills, equals talents, equal abilities, equal ambition, as they go through their life, as they go through their career, but the female also has the ambition to be a mother. Yeah. And that that instantly is going to take them out of the game for months, if not, years depending on on what their family dynamics are are. right how do we then continue to make that equal work-wise when the time becomes an equal or when the opportunity becomes an equal just because of that which they are born to do and they're the only ones that can do. And that's what makes them so powerful. One of the things that makes them so powerful that to me is, is a, is, is a question. I think that, I think that there's some countries that do it better than us. I mean, when we get into like logistics of something Mm -hmm. like that, because that's a great question, but there are some countries that do it better than us. Sweden does it better than us. Switzerland does it better than us. Canada, which Rarely do they do things better than us, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. I am joking. I've got Canadian friends. I love them. But but you look at Germany. Germany does it better than us when it comes to that. And I think that it's a... 
I, I think that there's so much legislation, and I'm not sure that legislation is the answer because I'm a small government, small legislation guy. Um, but when we look at this, if we looked at the man and the woman as having that baby, exactly, and they sure. both, if we looked at the male as more than just a battery, hmm. you understand? This is a this is a two way road. My penis when you just said that. What's that? He pointed at my penis when you just said that. <laughs> um, the battery. The battery. <laughs> if, but think about it. We look at men as producers, use them up, spit them out at sixty five, and then they get to try to what retire. I think that's a back ass word thought process. We need mm-hmm. to look at men as fathers first. Mm-hmm. If they're in that relationship and that female has got to go from work and this, then there needs to be legislation also in place that allows the male to, to in concert with her, do, handle their business there. Mm-hmm. Because we can't stop having kids. Do we you think, do you I mean, think if it's just allowed that it would, that it would happen? I don't know. This is a, this like, is a you thought can't process. Force. You, you can't, can't force, force, but, but this is a thought process yeah. that, um, that won't be changed today sure, or tomorrow. Yeah. But it's a thing that when people discuss like we're doing, mm-hmm. it's a great question you asked. So when we discuss these things, when we look around for solutions, when we, when, when we look at legislation and not try to, we can't penalize a small business. It's the backbone of America. Mm-hmm. If everybody disappeared from work to go be families, there's no way that we would have money coming in here to, to even pay for salaries yeah. and everything else. I mean, it doesn't, so this stuff has to all be sat down and talked about in a loving way. Like, how do we solve it? Yeah. Right. First of all, how do we get people to become aware of it? Cause yeah. most people aren't even aware. Sure. Most people think that race is the worst issue or the budget of America is the worst issue or politicians and, and Democrats mm-hmm. and Republicans or Republicans and Democrats or whatever they call them. What do they call them? <laughs> Republicrats <laughs> and Democons. I mean, they're all the same. Um, but they think that that's the biggest issue. It's, it's, it's making people aware of the real issue that will allow us all to come together as a community, one and, nation. As a and, one, and the reason why I ask, and I just envisioned my daughter one day applying for a, a job. And it's, it's come down between her and a man that had the exact equal skill set, talents, abilities, resume, experience, everything. And I'm thinking of that employer looking at both of them and saying, hmm, I could hire her or I could hire him. She is recently married. At some point in the next few years, she's probably going to have a kid. Yep. And that's going to take her out of commission. I'm going to be back stuck in this process again. Or I'm going to have a gap of however many months that that position is going to be void until she can come back. Well, man looks like an easier option. And you know that's happening. Like it's or, happening everywhere. Or, or this guy's young. He probably doesn't have his head screwed on straight yet. I'd rather hire him when he's in his, his 30s or 32, 33 years old after he's gotten his head kicked in a little bit mm-hmm. and he's gotten and his testosterone isn't flowing so, so great mm-hmm. and mighty because there's only one thing he's thinking about right now. <laughs> and better than yet, I can pay her less than him. Hmm. Boom. True. That sucks. That's yeah. what we're talking about. There's two different scenarios we both talked about and they both happen. Yeah. They both happen. I can and and they and they both I can argue for it. Like Yeah. Like you can argue I mean, from a, you from can, a, from can a justify stand, again, right? justify you can justify that. Like if I'm gonna invest the same in each person and I know without a shadow of, of a doubt that the female is there is going to be that circumstance that we're going to have to deal with. And if they are both equal in everything else, I can, I can see, I can understand. You, you certainly, just so everybody knows too, we're going to preface this with we're, we're bringing problems that we see to light. These aren't problems in our company and mm-hmm. Tyler is not in charge of hiring. <laughs> um, I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that, but but these things are things that, that need to be talked about. They need yeah. to be put out there, and they don't need to be met with hate or loathing or, or this had never happened. I mean, it happens. Yeah. It, this stuff happens, and we need to talk about it. We need to make people aware, and we need to raise our daughters and our sons in a different light than they have been raised in the past, period. 
Absolutely. Anyway. Because in that scenario, if that's my daughter, I'm I'm going to be pissed off. Yeah. If she gets passed on for a male and that's the only logical reason why. Right. But how do we fix it? And I think that we fix it through conversations. I, f- I think we fix it through influential people having these conversations publicly. Mm-hmm. Uh, that way other people can have their minds open to these ideas. Yep. Um, because if not, then things will just continue on the way they've continued on. And what has will always be. Right. Yep. That's a fact. So right. guys, with that, this is episode 109 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow.